Hi everybody, welcome to lab two, which is all about gram staining. So um, actually ignore this purpose right here. This is when I do it in lab, I usually give you three unknown bacteria and you prepare and complete gram stains and then do microscopy to identify them. In this case, you're just gonna be doing, practicing the technique and preparing one slide and you won't actually get to look at it under a microscope. Um, but just to remind you the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative cells. So gram staining is named after, I forget his first name, but his last name was Gram and he created this stain procedure. And it allows us to differentiate between bacteria with two different cell wall types. So gram-negative bacteria have two membrane layers, phospholipid layers, and one peptid, like a very thin peptidoglycan layer in between. Whereas gram-positive cells have one pep, uh, phospholipid membrane and a very thick peptidoglycan layer on the outside as their cell wall. So <clears throat> they stain differently. And this is the staining procedure. Um, I have a couple of slides, we'll go through it a couple of times. So the, there's four steps. The first step is to add crystal violet, which is a deep purple, bluish, bluish purple dye. And that stains everything. If we were to then rinse everything with water and look at the cells, everything would be stained blue. And that's because the dye sticks to that peptidoglycan. The second step we do is the mordant. Now the mordant is iodine, and the iodine causes the stain, the crystal violet molecules to sort of clump together. And this clumping traps them in the peptidoglycan layer of the gram-positive cells where it's very thick, but is not enough to really um, trap them in that thin peptidoglycan layer. <clears throat> Again, if we were to look at all the cells at this point, everything gram-positive, gram-negative, they would all still look purple. Um, so then we need to wash away any stain, any crystal violet that's not sticking. So then we do the alcohol. So the alcohol step, step three, is the decolorizer. And it's going to decolorize all of the gram negative cells. So the gram positive cells will still have that crystal violet trapped in their peptidoglycan layer, but the alcohol dissolves the outer membrane of the gram negative cells and washes away the crystal violet from that very thin peptidoglycan layer. So those cells are now clear. They are not stained. They are decolorized. And we can't see decolorized cells very well under the microscope. So in order to be able to see gram negative cells, we add a second stain, which is pink, and it's called safranin. And it's like a magenta color. And so while it does stick to those gram positive cells a little bit, that blue violet of the crystal violet is so much darker that the saffronin maybe just makes it a little bit purpler, but it's still pretty dark blue purple. And it makes the gram negative cells appear pink and gives them much more contrast so we can see them. So if you had a mixture of two cell types, gram positive and gram negative, you would see both purple and pink cells. If you have a pure culture, you should see only one color. So just a review of what the colors look like at different steps. So when we first prepare the slide and we put the bacteria on the slide and they are not stained, they are just clear colored, basically they're uncolored. They're similar color as the glass and have a similar refractive index, so not a lot of contrast. After the crystal violet step, everything is purple, gram positive and gram negative. Same thing after the iodine step, everything's still purple. When we decolorize, the gram positives will be purple, but the gram negatives will be clear, and so we add safranin so that we can color those gram negatives something, and that something is pink. And technically the gram positives get a little bit of that pink too, but just visually it's not as, it doesn't overpower the darker color of the blue. So we get different Stain. So on top here, I have some examples of some gram stained bacteria that are gram positive. So here we have some gram positive bacilli. They're in rods. Let's see if I can zoom in on these to look at them uh, more up close so you can really see the individual cells. So bacteria are super small. So this is a very high, this is the highest magnification, um, 100x. Uh, using the oil immersion lens on the microscope, and this is still as small as they are. So the, and these are like 
large-ish rods. All right, so these are some gram-positive rods. They're, um, they form a sort of strepto pattern. These would be streptobacilli. They grow in chains. All right, here's some streptococci. These are cocci, so you can see their little circles. They're round, and they grow in chains. These would be gram-positive streptococci. And here we have some gram-positive staphylococci. This picture, the resolution is kind of poor when I zoom in, but you can see they look kind of, they have that grape cluster kind of a look. They're like little balls, but they grow in these little, these little clusters. They look like little berries, kind of. All right, and then on the bottom, I have several gram-negative bacteria. So here are some gram-negative rods. These are much smaller rods than the gram-positive rods up here. Um, and you have to kind of really look closely to see that they are, in fact, rod-shaped. So these areas here, this is not a good area of the slide. There's too many bacteria clumped on top of each other. So where we're really zeroing in is in these zones where they're kind of spread apart and where we can see individual bacteria and we can kind of see, oh yeah, I think those are rod-shaped um, cells. And it's almost a tough call. It, sometimes they look like they might actually be diplococci. So don't quote me on it, but I, I'm going to call these rods. But under light microscope, sometimes they, it can still be hard to tell because they can be so small. Oh, here's some good ones right here that look very clearly rod-shaped to me. Um, all right, over to the middle picture. And so and you can see in this one in the lighting, they look very bright magenta. Sometimes, based on your staining and the lighting of your microscope, they look more of a paler pink. So you'll see that sort of inconsistency in the color. It never, never, never looks quite textbook or exactly the same. These are also some rods, um, small pink rods, so they're gram negative. These are spread out a little bit more, a little bit better of a microscope slide sample. And then over here we have some gram negative cocci, um, possibly some staphylococci. They do look like they're growing in some clusters, but you can't always tell from how they are on a slide. It's not necessarily how they look in um, the culture, depending on how you cultured them. So. Uh, these are some examples of what you would see in gram staining results, some gram positives versus some gram negatives. Um, so now we're going to actually do the procedure. So we've got to prepare our slide. So do my little lab set up here. My hair is tied back. My clothes are tucked in. I think, I think the string fell out of this sweatshirt actually. And I'm going to put on my gloves. So the first thing we need to do is prepare our slide. In order to look at microbes under the microscope, we need to put them on a glass slide, a microscope slide. Um, and before we prepare the slide, we're going to label it. We always label our things so we know what they are. And it's best to label the slide with a pencil, a regular pencil, number two. Um, the decolorizer step is an alcohol, and it will wash off pen. So just to get you in the habit of correctly labeling slides with pencil, which does not wash away, you'll want to label with your initials and the date. And it's actually not a bad idea to also maybe say what this is. So like I'm going to write gram on here so I know what this slide is. Okay. Um, now we're going to put the bacteria on the slide. So here's my slide. Where can you see it? <clears throat> I'm going to put it down here, um, leave it on the table, and I'm going to get my Benson burner on. And I want a blue flame. It's a little dirty. That'll do. And I'm going to flame my loop. Um, hold it in the middle of the blue area. It turns orange when my loop is in there. I'm going to get my loop all nice and hot and shiny, and I'm going to sterilize it all the way down. I'm going to let it cool. I'm not going to wave it around. I'll let it cool. And um, I'm using actually a freshly inoculated broth culture. What you guys should use is uh, to put a little bit of water in it and then a little bit of mustard until it's, until it's kind of cloudy. 
okay, so that you have a cloudy broth. Um, broth is the best is is the best to make the best culture to make a slide from because the bacteria are already kind of spread around, whereas they're really dense in a colony on a plate. So that's why we're going to use a broth culture. So your broth culture should be cloudier than mine, but just some water and a little you know dot or two of mustard in there and or paint and swirl it all up so that it's a cloudy water but not too thick still like a watery solution after the loop has cooled we're going to stick it in there and get a little bit so you'll see a little bit uh, like a little drop of water on the loop of your of your inoculating loop and then you're just going to sort of tap it onto the slide until that drop of water comes off onto that glass slide and then you're going to spread it around. Sometimes it's that that water wants to stick to the loop and so you have to kind of, you know, tap it a little aggressively to get that loop that water off. And then you're just going to smear it around in a circle. And you want to spread that circle out kind of thin. You're trying to get those bacteria spread out. You don't want little clumps of bacteria there. You want them to be spread out. Also, the next step is we're going to air dry this. And air drying is faster if you spread it out really well. So you just spread it out, then you're going to sterilize your loop. Now, the air drying step is actually the longest step. It takes usually takes about 10 minutes for it to completely air dry. And it's important to let it completely air dry because if we don't, the next step after this is we're going to we're going to run the slide through the flame to fix the cells. Well, if the cells are still wet, and we run them through the flame and we're just gonna boil them. And that's that's gonna change their morphology. That's not gonna give us an accurate picture of how they look. So we need them to be dry before we heat fix them. So um, a dry slide, like if it's still wet, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but you can kind of see where it's still wet there. So this, you would wanna wait until it's completely dry and you just have like a, dried filmy area. Um, I like on a cooking show went ahead and pre-prepared one that is dried and on the dried slide you should be able to see some residue. Um, this is bacteria not mustard but I'm imagining the mustard will leave a bit of a residue too but it's no longer glossy so you know it's dry. Um, so now that it's dry I'm going to grab my um, my slide with the clothespin um, just so that I don't burn myself and it'll also be how I hold it when I stain so that I don't stain myself and then you're going to pass it through the flame slowly I think it's kind of like roasting a marshmallow and um, honestly I'm terrible at heat fixing I haven't quite figured out the art of it you want to um, you want Essentially, you're trying to sort of melt the bacterial membranes to the glass slide without frying the bacteria. So it's kind of, there's kind of a subtle art to it. You don't want it to be, um, you don't want it to be turning black uh, you, and you're not using a real flame so you won't see that. But in actual lab, I oftentimes will see students with slides that have like soot and they're black because they've been a little too hot. Um, another way that we can fix that we can fix our specimen onto slides, which I've started using in recent years, is methanol. Um, the alcohol, again, it disrupts those membranes. It helps fuse them to the slide. And um, it works much more reliably than heat fixing. Because if you don't heat fix enough, then the bacteria don't stick to the slide and they all wash away when you stain. And if you heat fix too much, then they, um, they just look distorted and they don't stain properly. So because of that, I've switched to methanol fixing, but we're gonna go through the motions of, of heat fixing. So you'll just roast your marshmallow slide here. Um, hopefully I did that well enough. And now uh, we can start seeing. So I'm gonna turn off my Bunsen burner and put it away. Bunsen burner off and away. And I'm gonna move my culture aside as well because now I'm ready to stain. And uh, I have this nice little staining kit here that actually my predecessor made. 
can. Let's see, let's change the camera angle again. We'll angle it down here. Okay, so I'm holding it over a sink. You can hold it over a bowl. Um, oh, I forgot my water squirt bottle. So I'm gonna just rest my slide here. Be right back. Okay, so you're gonna need some water. You can use um, just like a water bottle or a cup of water is fine. And so this happens in four steps. So let me uh, go to the next PowerPoint slide here. All right, so the gram stain procedure is typed, but I also have it in picture format. Um, they might, I should double check, but sometimes it, it tells you to do it for 30 seconds and sometimes it says one minute. Um, it's not, it's not a big deal whether you do one or the other. Okay, so the stain, the first step, we're doing the crystal violet. The crystal violet is like a violet stain. So we're just going to put some drops of crystal violet on here. I want to fully cover the sample spot and I'm going to let it sit for 30 seconds. I'm going to pretend like it's been 30 seconds and I'm going to spill off the dye into my bowl and pour some water on it to wash that purple dye off. The next step is the iodine, the mordant, and I'm going to open this bottle up. And you guys will, you have just fake bottles, little pictures of them, so you'll cut them out and you'll pretend to drop some stain on here. Um, so I'm going to now put the iodine, this bottle's all, there we go. Just a few drops of iodine, just enough to cover the that spot of bacteria where the bacteria is. And we're going to leave that on for 30 seconds to a minute. We're going to pretend like we did that already. And now we're going to wash that off just with some water. And now it's the decolorizing step. Now the decolorizing step is very critical because um, we're using alcohol to decolorize. If we over if we overuse the alcohol, um, we will decolorize everything, um, even our gram positive cells. So we just want to add the decolorizer um, a drop at a time, and we're just kind of watching the stain. Um, kind of, you, you'll see that the water the, or the alcohol turns a little bit purplish. And we're just going to do a few more drops. And we're going to call that decolorize. So we don't want to over decolorize it. We definitely want to make sure we decolorize it or otherwise everything's going to be look gram positive if, if we don't do that step. So that's probably the most critical step of the of the gram procedure. Um, and now we can wash it again. Wash off that alcohol with some water. And then lastly is the safranin. Um, we're going to add some safranin, and that is a sort of a pink reddish dye. It's really dark, so it is pretty concentrated. But when I put it on the slide, you can kind of see that it's red, like a wine color. I don't know that you can see color that well in my video here. And we're going to leave that on for 30 to 60 seconds, and then we wash it off. So. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to dry off the slide. So we're not going to take a paper towel and wipe the slide because we do have cells here. They're dead, um, but they are only sort of, you know, loosely attached to the slide here. And so we use this bibulous blotting paper. It's kind of just like filter paper. What you'll use is a paper towel or a piece of paper, and you just are going to close it, like fold that paper or paper towel over it, and you're just gonna gently, very gently sort of blot it and press it. Um, this is a step where in class, sometimes people get a little too vigorous and they push too hard and they, they crack their slide. So just do it gently. You don't wanna crack your slide and break it. So you're just kind of blotting it dry with whatever. Paper towels are in real life not good to use because they have little fibers um, that end up on the slide 
and become distractions in the microscopy. So that's why we, the bibulous paper is like fiber free. So it doesn't leave any fibers behind on the slide. But since you guys won't be doing any actual microscopy, it's not, not really an issue. So I just want to show you, I'm putting the slide here. Um, make sure the bottom is wiped off and see if you can, you can see, all right, there is this purple, the, the pinkish purple area in the middle, that is my sample. So I, I can see that I do still have bacteria there and they are stained. Um, you won't see that with your mustard. Your mustard will wash away um, completely in, in your um, pretend slides. But in a real lab setting, you usually can hold up your slide to a piece of white paper or to the light and see an area where there are some stained cells. Um, and that's, that's a good check if you don't see anything. Sometimes there's still cells there. They're just that just means they're very sparse. If you see like a lot, like it's really thick and dark, that's um, probably going to be a not a great slide to look at on the microscope because the bacteria will be too thick and too dense. So um, that is gram staining. Then we would be doing microscopy, but since you guys are going to be doing that virtually. Um, I won't go to that lab. So then, of course, after you're done staining, you know, show me your slide. And I didn't even wipe down my area at the beginning, which I should have done. Wipe down your area at the beginning. My mom always said, do as I say, not as I do, which is a terrible thing to say. I hated it when she said that. But So you should have started by wiping down your area. I did it before I started the video. Um, but I'm done now, so I'm wiping it down. The end.